The following live streamed program is made possible by Atlanta Video Network, making your streams come true. It's time once again for another edition of Talk to Me. And now, here's Emmy himself, eight-time Emmy Award-winning journalist, Maynard Eaton. Hello, friends, and welcome to this week's edition of Talk to Me. I'd like to have you listen to a special announcement by City Council President Felicia Moore. Atlanta finds itself at a critical juncture. Again, I have heard your voices, and time has come for me to take the next step. Joining me now is, of course, City Council President Felicia Moore, now a mayoral candidate. Mayor Moore, Correct. Welcome. thank Mayor. you. <laughs> Why Thank now? you so much for Why? having me. Why now? Why this announcement now? Why did you decide to do this? Is it political ambition? Is it timing? Or the issues compel you to do it? I think I would say the timing and the issues compel me. Uh, as you know, the, the mayor was looking to uh, perhaps go into the Biden administration. There was much speculation about that and her help in his bid, successful bid to be president of the United States. And I am the president of council and our charter says, based on the timing, that I would become the mayor if she had resigned. So I had started very much preparing to be mayor, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to get done, as well as preparing to run for the office. And of course, now she is going to stay in Atlanta, but I believe that the issues have compelled me to move forward because there are things that I want to get done on behalf of the citizens of the city. And they have asked me to consider running because they are issues that they want addressed. You said in your announcement this that voters are frustrated. Are they talking to you about that? And what is the source of their frustration, you believe? Oh, uh, yes, they are very frustrated, as well as employees of the city. I seem to be the sounding board for a whole lot of people. Um, they're frustrated about everything. They want to see some action. Now, of course, you know, we've been closed during COVID, so it's made things a little bit more difficult. But there are a lot of things that are not getting attention. So crime is the number one issue in the city. So everybody knows that one. But there are also uh, issues with our fire department. There are issues in our watershed department. Uh, there's not a department of the city that doesn't need some attention. People are frustrated with city services, the look of our city. Um, there's just a plethora of, of issues. And I would add for me that I've always been one to uh, look at the city finances. I want to make sure that we're in a good financial position because of COVID. As you well know, Council President Moore, every stroke of a political campaign is strategized. What's your strategy to win this, the best Mayor Bottoms? Well, first of all, I have uh, support across the city. And so I come to, to this having come off a runoff with from Council President that showed that I had support in pretty much every district in this city. And so that's a, that's a good start, as well as the fact in the runoff race, uh, I was the best vote getter of all of the candidates that ran on it for any race in the runoff. And so I come with a good base of support. I come keeping engaged, involved, and interacting with citizens and hearing their concerns and attempting to help them in this position the best I could which is leading me why another reason I'm running for mayor, I've been council president for uh, three years. I was council member representing the only district in the city that goes truly from Bankhead to Buckhead uh, and everything in between. And I then was a council aide. I was Atlanta Planning Advisory Board delegate. I was a neighborhood planning unit chair. I was a neighborhood president. So I come with it with a whole lot of history of being engaged and involved and haven't stopped that uh, during my elected service. And so I have an ear to the ground and I know what the citizens want and I want the same thing for them. And in order to really get it done, I can advocate, I can pass legislation, I can do all that. But the way you really get it done is you get in that mayor's seat where you can make things happen. 
Police chief, if I may call you that, will your support primarily come from Buckhead or from Bankhead? Uh, where will your money and your endorsements come from, you think? Well, I, again, I have support across the city. I'm a citywide candidate, and you can go and look at the numbers and see that uh, my vote and support are across the city. I'm not turning away anyone's money, no matter where it comes from, because it's all spendable. And if, if, and they're all uh, have a vested interest in seeing Atlanta run. So, you know, it's not a, just a Buckhead issue, but Buckhead knows me. And I would expect that they support me because I've represented portion of their district and I've been engaged with many of the neighborhoods in the Buckhead area when I represented District 9, as well as with council president. So I would expect support all over the city. I expect support in Southwest Atlanta, uh, Northwest Atlanta, my district that I represented, Southeast Atlanta. I know um, citizens across the city and I've interacted with and helped uh, citizens and leadership in this community leadership across the city. I said on a Channel 11 interview yesterday that this is going to be a tough race, a, a verbal fisticuffs, if you will. Uh, Mayor Bottoms says it's going to be robust. How do you view this upcoming challenge against uh, Mayor Bottoms? Well, the race that I want to run is one first uh, to make sure that people know me. I, I just can't assume everyone does, but most people who follow city government knows me and knows of my service. But I want to make sure that people know my commitment to the city and the things that I've done and how I can get things done and how I have a passion for the city. So um, that's what I want to do. And I want to talk about the issues, talk about policy and my platform in a detailed way, other than usually when people run for office, they throw out a promise and there's no real details on how you're going to get it done. I want to do that. Now, that's what I would like to happen. Uh, if the race becomes something other than that, then I will uh, make sure that I address it. As you well know, the city is often described as a city of the haves and have nots. Uh, where do you think you will side up in terms of your support from that arena? Will well, I mean, I think, I think the haves will uh, be able to do better in terms of donations and contributions. The have-nots will be there for support, volunteerism, and maybe small donations. But I expect that I, I will get uh, support on both sides. Uh, and it may not all be monetary. And and when the you last... say the have and have-nots, let me say this, that that's another part of my platform that I want to get started because it's, it's a generational issue that's going to take more than one or two terms of any mayor is we've got to deal with this issue of income inequality and the inequality in our city. And I wanna work with the school system as a true partner, bring a safety net to children because we gotta start with them so that in the next 10 or 20 years, we have our next leadership for the city, our next good city employees uh, and, and productive citizens in our society and help to them to break generational po po uh, poverty in their own um, families. So that is a part of it. So hopefully uh, the more administration can begin to break that cycle so that we don't have many have and have nots in the city, that everyone will have something. Does it trouble you that the so-called black Mecca uh, is populated by uh, executives, black executives, but also we have so many poor folks. Is it an economic divide and a racial divide, some say in Atlanta now? It is, and I'm sorry, I apologize on that. Um, yes, it is, and I, it's a class issue too. I know we, yeah, we like to yeah, frame yeah. it a lot in, in terms of race, but it's not all about race, it is about class. There are uh, many for very prosperous African-Americans who are separated from those who are not. So that is the, the divide that we have, and I think that there is a way to start to bring that together, because I believe whether you're black, you're white, you're Hispanic, you're Asian uh, in the city, and you are have, there's something that you can be doing to help lift up your neighbor. And we're only strong as strong in the city as our weakest link. And so the weak links need to be strengthened and it can be done in a way that's in partnership where no one feels as if somebody's taking something from them, but attention has to be given to both. I've had experience in doing this, Maynard, because 
again, I represented District 9 from Bankhead to Buckhead. And so I have paid attention and there's no part of my district that you will go to that they said they felt neglected. I showed up at all their meetings. I attended all the, the things that they had. I attended to their needs. If someone from Buckhead called, I respond to their request. If someone on the other side of the district call, I respond to their request. And in that sense, the part of my district that are lower income was really where I spent most of my time because I knew they needed extra help. They needed things that were not a problem in the other parts of the district. We're talking about code enforcement. I picked up more trash, fished more uh, junk tires, uh, try to stop drug houses and all kinds of things that I didn't have to do maybe in the other part of the district, but I gave it the attention that it deserved. And I did the best that I could to alleviate some of the concerns that they had. Is a lot of city government failing the poor, failing those who who struggle to meet uh, to survive every day? I mean, there's a, a round of folks who say Atlanta government it doesn't care for us. I think that it's not been addressed and has been neglected. I definitely can say that COVID has taught us a lesson, and it has brought to light a lot of the issues that. We've dealt with, we've known, but we really probably haven't put the attention to. The unsheltered population, although I had been screaming about the fact that we were gonna have an issue with that uh, three years ago when I started as president and had talked to my colleagues across the country, particularly places like Los Angeles, Seattle, where you are seeing uh, just unbelievable scenes of um, unsheltered population, but we are seeing it here. Um, as well as those who are in poverty and in need. And I think that what has happened, you know, we've got water boys that are out there selling because they're trying to make money to if some of them are bringing it to their families to help ends meet. So I believe now they're not going to be ignored because, you know, our situation right now is such that they're at the forefront. And it's time for us to start to deal, to deal with that issue. And I want to, I want to get that started. We mentioned the water boys. It, it, it harks back to those who suggest crime is rampant in Atlanta. Um, 157 homicides last year, a 58% increase. And you say crime would be one of your number one issues. How do you correct well, that, ma'am? Well, crime, I have to uh, make a number one issue because it's a number one issue across yeah. this city. I will say the media kind of has done us a disservice in the fact that when something happens in the Buckhead area, it gets the attention to the chagrin of the rest of the district. And I can say even in District 9, where they've had ongoing public safety issues that they feel that have not been addressed. And in my administration, everybody's issues are going to be addressed. It's not a one side or the other, because actually we're all one city. So what happens to one happens to us all. Um, and it's you asked me about the the water boys and i was one to ask that they stop uh, i brought out put out that message and then the mayor did uh, direct the police to do the same thing and i i want to say that they've been around for i know at least 10 years when i was district nine council member the most concern i had about them were the you know the boys on the corner had trash everywhere and i'd just go talk to them, tell them, hey, you got to pick up this trash. People are complaining. They would do it. It was no issue. When COVID hit, more kids started to participate in it because they saw that there was a moneymaker. It was a way for them right. to make money. Right. And then it became a bit aggressive, a lot aggressive. And in some cases, violence where, the, you know, you've had uh, people shot, uh, people robbed and other things that you've seen some of the videos. I just believe in, in having high expectations. So if you raise the level of expectations, people rise to it. And so what we need to do is one, after COVID, immediately get our recreation centers back open. That was one thing the kids didn't have anything to do. Hopefully they'll be able to get back to school so they won't be on the street all the time. And then we need to go back to our workforce development agency and see if we can bring back 
the summer program for kids. I remember many years when I was at City Hall, the ki there would be young adults and kids at City Hall. Kids want to make money these days, and we've right, got to find right. a way to incentivize them and, and let them make money legally. So when we say, here's an opportunity, we have to provide the opportunity for them to be able to have, and then those who don't want to take advantage of that opportunity, we have to let them know, you can't sell water. Uh, and, I, and I hear people who criticize me when I said, don't let them do it. It's only because it's really a big safety concern right now. Uh, but there was a task force that was uh, generated by the mayor's office. I just think that there were some good ideas in there. Right now, we just need execution and we need to get these things done. But isn't that, yes, you have received some criticism, but isn't the root of the issue, the lack of funds, the lack of money, poverty, isn't that what's really driving this, this water boys and other situations, other crises like that? I think that it is for some, and uh, probably a majority of them, you know, they are, I mean, let me just say, tell you, it's very lucrative. Uh, people think that they're just selling a bottle of water and getting a dollar, you know, people, We'll give them twenty dollars or a hundred dollars, uh, and they may not even take the water. So they're getting a lot of money. They're making probably three to four hundred dollars a day. That's pretty lucrative. I don't think the city can match that in terms of giving them income, but many of them are taking it home and they're making ends meet. And that is why, you know, in my administration, not only do I want to look to what can we do for the youth, but we also need to look at how we can uplift families uplift single mothers, get them into jobs, get them so that they can make the money that they need to be able to help their family. So they wouldn't have to rely on, you know, a, a hundred or $200 a kid may make out selling water on the street. You mentioned uh, during your announcement that the, this race is against crime, inequality and corruption. What do you mm -hmm. mean by the corruption? Well, as you know, we've had an ominous cloud hanging over city government for about four years now, and there are still ongoing investigations and probes. There are indictments that are out there. There are trials yet to be had, and there'll probably be more indictments to come. And so we don't know the breadth, the total breadth of what happened in the corruption investigation until the U.S. Attorney's Office moves on some of those, which I wish they will do quickly so that we can start to deal with those issues, find ways to make sure it doesn't happen again, and then be able to heal the city and move on to gaining public trust. You are a political scholar. You know politics inside and out. You know city government inside and out. Is Atlanta City Hall corrupt? I would say that there is a culture of corruption at City Hall and corruption in that term. And I will say that over time, that has also filtered to um, how people operate in the departments. And that goes from a leadership standpoint. And that's why I said in my speech, and I will be saying as a mayor, that there's no room for that here. And those things that you're doing, whoever it is out there, that you know are against the charter, against the code, or against the citizen of the city, frankly. If you're doing it, you better stop and you better hope I didn't find out you did it because it will not be accepted in my administration at all. There will be zero tolerance, minus zero tolerance. You sound like you're gonna be tough at the top job, huh? Well, I mean, that shouldn't be tough because people should want to uh, have an honest day's pay and an honest day's work. They should be wanting to work on behalf of the citizens of the city. They should want to safeguard the money that comes in the city and not misuse it. Because see, this is what happens, Maynard. When you have a corrupt uh, a, uh, government and money is spent, on things or that they're not supposed to, then we can't provide water. We can't provide money to help the water boys. We can't provide programs and services to help someone who has in income insecurity. It stops us from being able to do the things that we know that we need to do for our city. It's a theft of our city resources and even our city reputation. And that's why it will not be tolerated in my administration. And if that's called tough, you haven't seen me yet if I hear that it's happening when I mayor the city. Wow. Uh, finally, 
three council president more. The last five city council presidents before you have unsuccessfully mm-hmm. run for mayor. What will make your bid different, ma'am? Because I'm going to win. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, history is made every day. And so no city council president has won until one wins. And I intend to be that council president. I'll break that uh, that ceiling. You know, good luck. And as I guess, as you said in your in your press conference, also, uh, Atlanta deserves more. Is that your phrase? It wants more. It needs more, and it certainly deserves more than we have. And I intend to bring it to the citizen of the city. President Moore, good luck and God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining us. This has been. Thank you so much for having. <laughs> Thank you.